Welcome to the Fast Cars, Fast Girls podcast with Abby and Molly. Okay, it's season two, episode eight. What do you say, Abby? Want to warm up the tires? Yeah, baby, let's warm up those tires. Uh, so, let's talk about, well, we, uh, we've got uh, a wonderful interview with Sabre Cook yes. today that I'm super excited about. I know you are as well. 100%. Uh, yeah, and to any of our listeners, you're going to love her. Yes. If you don't know who she is, you're about to meet her. Uh, she's She's in the latter series, the Mazda Road to Indy, uh, that leads up to the Indy Car Series, mm-hmm. and uh, she's just awesome. Uh, she's a strong driver. She's got lots of great potential, yep. and she just seems like somebody I want to be friends with. Exactly, and she's got a great head on her shoulders. She really does. I mean, for especially for as young as she is, she's yeah. really got a great head on her shoulders, a great understanding of the commitment and what it takes to do well in this sport and uh and she just seems she just seems cool yeah (laughs) (laughs) i mean it's like i i i want to i enjoy her as a driver and now i want to be like so you want to like hang out or go chill (laughs) right so while you're while you're in town like you you want to hang out (laughs) can we have a friend date i feel like that that should be okay let's do this (laughs) yeah Definitely. So, yeah. So, Saber Cook, uh, that'll be great. Yeah. And then we are going to review the Grand Prix of Alabama, a.k.a. Mm. Barber. A.k.a. Rain. A.k.a. Rain. It was uh, not the weekend that everybody was expecting. No. This does make back-to-back weekends that Rain actually won the race. It does. Uh, Mm. Rain won the race for NASCAR last week. Yep. And, uh, well... It almost won the race. It I would say uh, it, it podiumed. It did podium. Yeah, I think it would podium it, for Indy. Yeah. Yeah, it podiumed, but it did not win this week for Indy. Uh, watch out, F1. You're next. <laughs> yeah, coming for you. The rain is coming for you. Uh, all right. So first up, we'll let you guys listen to this great interview with uh, Sabra Cook. Uh, as Abby said, she's in Lost Road to Indy. She's currently with Team Bennick. Um, so we think that you will enjoy it because we enjoyed it. So enjoy. We are so excited to have with us Sabra Cook, who is a driver in the USF 2000 on the Monster Road to Indy. And we're real appreciative that she was able to take some time to speak to us. So thank you so much for speaking with us today. Well, thank you guys for having me as well. We um, obviously one of the big things that we do in our podcast is highlight uh, female racers. So having a, a young up and coming talent uh, on our podcast is great. Kind of doing some looking on your very nice website. I noticed you've been racing since you were about 10 years old competitively. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, my so I kind of, you know, the whole usually get asked, like, well, how did you get started? Yeah. And my my dad, uh, he used to race motocross and supercross professionally. So obviously, like, didn't really want us doing that. You know, it's a <laughs> bit more dangerous, risky. So um, got us into got us our own carts and uh, just kind of. I was actually called, they called me Driving Miss Daisy for, like, a good first few years because that was, you know, I thought it was so cool, but then I kind of spun out and scared myself, and so then I just drove really slow. <laughs> and then, um, I don't know, one day uh, at 10, like, around 10 was when I kind of got my first, like, real race cart because I I uh, I remember I was being teased by one of the boys, and they're like, oh, I'm beating you, and, you know, for, for going slow or something. And I just told my dad, I was like, I was like, I could win if I had a faster card and just had like a full like kind of breakthrough moment. And ever since then, it kind of just took off from there. And I won my first race like shortly after. And the rest, you know, the rest is is uh, the story that leads up to where I am now. So <laughs> that's kind of an amazing story, actually. I love I love that you're like, look, I could beat them if I had the right the right equipment. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, unfortunately, like that's kind of how it goes sometimes sure. but uh sure. I wasn't taking it as seriously so you know I just had kind of a hand-me-down car that wasn't you know uh I guess fully like it would have been very difficult to win for sure <laughs> on that <laughs> sure now um, you indicated your dad kind of gave us did you uh race with your siblings to start off with 
Um, a little bit. So mm-hmm. I have a younger brother, mm-hmm. and he uh, he's about almost three years younger than me, mm-hmm. and he raced as well. And you know, right off the bat, he was kind of you know the fearless kind of thing, where you know the boys go right for it, and and uh, but we were old enough to where like our age gap. Usually, we were in different classes, so. Um, you know, and then until like later on when uh, we both ended up racing kind of in junior or mini max together. But mm-hmm. uh, I did race with him a little bit growing up and, and my cousins as well. Um, but not like super competitive, like head to head kind of thing is, you know, like other siblings kind of, get, <laughs> I suppose. Cool. That's really awesome. Is there still some some sibling rivalry um my brother actually quit a while ago unfortunately he uh he has a ton of talent like he's one of those kids that's just kind of like good at a lot of things and he could do anything he wants he's just got to get that kind of he needs to kind of stick to stick to one thing and so he's uh he's just trying to figure out what that one thing is still right now so you know it must be something about younger siblings because you could literally be talking about mine or molly's yeah she's like oh that's my little brother yeah Yeah. that's my little sister she's good at so many things i mean we're still young and he's you know he's just figuring it out and i've total confidence that when he does decide to do whatever he wants to do he'll be great at it but yeah right now he's just he's just being a little brother and and that was spoken just like a big sister right (laughs) now you kind of alluded to it but um would would you say your earliest memory then as a driver was when you were talking with your dad about wanting that better cart to beat the boys you think that's your earliest memory uh my earliest memory for sure was actually the very first time um well, one of the earliest, I guess, would be my dad had a shifter car, and they were run- racing around in in, uh, in a parking lot, actually, in front of a high school. They had, like, a course set up, and uh, I remember he sat me on his lap in the shifter car and, and, and would take us around um, for a few laps. But then, um, other than that, me personally first mm-hmm. driving was when I got my uh, 50 Comer, and I was so excited, and they obviously didn't really, like, kind of teach us what to do at first and so he's they just kind of put us in it and we're like all right go (laughs) so I took off and kind of didn't realize at the time that you had to slow down to turn so I was just like flat out tried to turn the wheel and then I spun out and scared myself (laughs) so that was that was like kind of like the earliest memory was the very first time I ended up driving the cart was was when I was probably eight years old oh wow oh wow so uh, how long have you would you have you been racing since about you were eight or yeah, I mean, I started um, just really, like, low-key club stuff, just kind of driving when, you know, when I first got my card, and then, but I didn't really take it, you know, more seriously and start racing more competitively until I was about 10. Okay. Excellent. Wow. So, what uh, what has been your favorite memory uh, over your entire career? What's been, you know, your, your best day as a driver? Um... Ooh. there's, I mean, there's, there's probably like three that kind of stand out, but uh, the fine. first one that comes to mind is, uh, um, I was, I was 17 and I was the first female to win the, uh, Supercarts USA national championship in 2012. Awesome. And, uh, I remember, you know, with the, at the end of the day, we have kind of like a trophy giving presentation banquet and, uh, I actually got a chance to, you know, like shower properly and like, you know, kind of like not look like a total track rat at the, at the moment and got to get up there in my, you know, on the podium and, uh, they presented us with the, with the championship, uh, plates and the moment when I, my name was called and I stood up at the top and I remember the entire, like the entire building stood up and gave me a standing ovation. And that was just like one of the greatest memories I, I will remember like till you know till I'm 90 years old <laughs> yeah wow. I'm sure that just just all the emotions in that moment that sounds yeah, amazing definitely we're amazing yeah well and then I guess on the flip side of that since you've been racing for a while what what would you say is kind of the the hardest thing you've had to overcome um honestly I think uh, I, I guess it's kind of been, you know, you can have both the mental and physical side of it. So I guess if we just take, you know, the physical side, when I was about um, 15, you know, 16, and you start moving up and you're allowed to race with like 
full grown like a man or adults and that kind of at that point you know the boys and girl hormones start (laughs) changing quite a bit so at that point you know I I noticed that there was kind of a a disparity and um strength kind of and so once I actually like committed to a full-time like fitness schedule and really worked on um strengthening myself in that way, it, I definitely, like, I instantly picked up a lot of speed and a lot of time and confidence and everything. So, I mean, that wasn't totally difficult, but uh, definitely, like, I still have to kind of just make sure I keep up on it. So that way I, I can handle, you know, anything that I get in or eventually maybe, like, the, you know, IndyCar pa- no power steering. <laughs> The way it's a super heavy car and tons down for so just being um making sure that i'm ready to do it and that for sure as long as you just put the work in it's it's not an issue and i mean we've seen that time and time again with pippa man and Catherine leg and de silvestro like they they had no problem like handling the cars but mentally um mm-hmm. i think that is the biggest struggle for any driver to be honest is you know making sure that you can manage the environment around you, I guess mm-hmm. it just kind of always make sure you put your best foot forward. So that, um, I've done a lot of like research over the past few years and reached out to a lot of, um, sports psychologists. And, um, one of the best books that I read and people that I talked to was, um, Dr. Jacques Dallaire, who wrote uh, performance thinking and amazing book, uh, amazing man. And, uh, so that kind of really helped me once I got to talk to him last year and when I was doing the Team USA scholarship. So yeah. that the whole process, we got to go through an evaluation with him and I had a, kind of been going through a mental block. And once I spoke with him, I, I something just clicked and I was able to give a really good performance that weekend. So yeah. I think that would be kind of, kind of the thing for me is just um, still managing and, you know, kind of making sure that you realize that you are like your own worst enemy or you're, you you know, you are anything that you think you become and you're just, you're the programmer of your own mind. And so just like making sure that you take care of yourself and take care of your mental health and and putting yourself in the best situations possible, I think is what um, a lot of people actually struggle to that they go through and in any, you know, any sporting career. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I think that's something that, you know, you always think about, the, excuse me, the uh, the physical strength and, and how that comes into play, but it's definitely not talked about as much, but you absolutely have to have, you know, the ability to focus and calm your mind at the times it needs to be calm and be alert when it needs to be alert. And yeah, there's there's a yeah. lot that goes into yeah, that mental side that, that has huge uh, implications yeah. for how your performance goes. Yeah. Yeah. And what, and I think people don't, you know, it's, it's a, I had a, a a friend of mine talk to me about, you know, horse jumping, you know, there's no men and women's in horse jumping either. And so it's like, but right now the best horse jumpers are females. And so it's just kind of shows, you know, that it's, it's all kind of mentality wise. And yeah, there's a lot more girls that jump horses right now than men. So usually typically the women, (laughs) the women come out on top, just like racing, you know, there's like 5,000 guys and 25 girls. So it's like, you know, the, the ratios are a bit skewed, but I think that people don't realize as much like how much power you have, you know, just when you decide to do something. And, and that's what most successful people in, in any area will tell you is just, you know, it's, it's all about, um, making sure you're, you're in the right mindset and, and it, then you can achieve whatever you need to. Absolutely. Well, wow. That was, that was a really great answer. <laughs> <laughs> That was fantastic. So you are currently right now in the USF 2000 and the Mazda Road to Indy. Yes. And this is, uh, I I looked and I'm going to double check myself. This is your first year, correct? Very first year. First race to St. Pete. Oh, that's that's a new thing. And uh, kind of a rookie team as well with with Benick. And I mean, they have amazing people that they've hired and are, you know, in charge of maintaining the team. So the, the, those people are seasoned, obviously, but the name, the Benick name, this is the first full season the team will run as well. Oh, that's amazing. That's right. We listen, we listen to you on the radio at St. Pete. We did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it's, it's a good situation. They're really great guys. And I, and my teammates great. It kind of like, I got a second younger brother. Uh. <laughs> Michael. <laughs> well, that's <laughs> so good. Young. So uh, I think it's a really good situation we got going, and uh, we'll see how it ends up the rest of the year. Yeah. Excellent. So just a fun question. 
if you could choose any race, and, and we'll go ahead and say any discipline, because um, I know you also do a bit on the sports car side as well. What is the one race you, you would want to win? Oh, like if if I wasn't, oh, if money or anything wasn't a factor, like yeah. in a perfect world. <laughs> in a perfect world, yeah. <laughs> in a perfect world, um, I would have to say the Grand Prix of Monaco or the 24 Hours of Le Mans. So it's, it's like, you know, I, I don't know. And then, but I've also heard lately that like the 12 hours, a 12 hour, like of Sebring is like one of the hardest races that you'll ever do, even though it's not a 24. So I guess those, those two or three are kind of like the iconic ones in my mind. And I've been obsessed with the Grand Prix of Monaco ever since I was a little kid. I don't know why, but I mean, just, it, uh, it is a whole, very special race. Yeah. Yeah. The whole, just like the, the. I guess the presentation and the ambiance and everything that just goes into it, it just, it's a lot different than any of the other races. And obviously Monaco is beautiful anyways, but it's just, uh, it's different, you know, and a street course is, is very difficult in itself. So I think to win that is something really special. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, that absolutely would be. Uh, all right. Uh, what's, let's see. We like to ask some fun questions too, so we're gonna mix it up so we're not <laughs> no, all so serious. Are good. <laughs> all right, so um, let's see. Who was your favorite driver growing up, or like oh. your, your idol and right, racing somebody that you've always looked up to? Um, when I was growing up, uh, there was a Carter. He he never raced uh, cars professionally, but he's an amazing person, and he was actually like the very first. I haven't had a ton of like driver coaching as like you know as i've grown up and noticing now i'm really starting to value that and try and get more of it but uh he was my first kind of coach for a bit and his name is alan rudolph and he's um won a lot of karting championships um he's an american he currently is, oh, just opened up a track in houston and uh so he's a really great guy great family and um i think he just like knows kind of we connect a lot the same and think a lot the same so I definitely looked up to him and um but car wise um when I first started to really get to know you know research more on the F1 because that's you know the the ultimate level in in most people's mind and so I guess um I really well Senna I started especially after I read the art of racing in the rain I don't know what it is about but I really, that's like my favorite book. And then just yeah. kind of getting to more know about the whole thing and like researching it and how much they talked about Schumacher. And so mm, Senna, yeah. like I was kind of, I mean, is a lot of people's just iconic level, top level, like, yeah. you know, like if that's like the perfect person you could be. But the reason why I think I like him is, I mean, he died the same year I was born, actually the same month. So it's not like I got to see him, you know, live race or anything like that with him in it, but just hearing how passionate he was, yeah. was, I think is why I I'm drawn to, to him more than some of the other drivers, because I think, I don't know if it's being a girl, but you know, being a little bit more emotional. And I think that that pushes you to a next level too, is, you know, just having that passion and, and the why and, and the drive to do it. So mm -hmm. I think that's why I really like him as well. But, uh, and then Mark Weber was a uh, more like recent F1 driver that, yeah. uh, that I actually really, really liked. And he's really good in sports cars as well. So, um, I like him and Juan Pablo Montoya obviously doesn't take shit off anybody. And he's right. a great, great dude to look up to. And he drives the wheels off anything he gets into. So he really does. it's hard Juan, to pick Juan one, you know? Who doesn't love Juan? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he we actually, we have a lot, um, we, we like to create, funny memes with drivers um, yeah we, we've got quite a few with Juan uh, oh no just because I mean he's I mean it's 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 funny to you know to poke fun at him because at the end of the day he's just a hell of a driver yeah I mean he can oh, yeah. drive anything and do very well at it yeah yeah <laughs> He's, so. he's, and he just speaks his mind and he's just, you know, he, oh, yeah. he's, he's got such a strong mentality to where he just, you know, he's confident in his abilities and he doesn't worry about any of the stupid frivolous things that, you know, a lot of us get caught up in today's like overstimulating environments and social environments. So it's uh, he's a really cool person for sure. Definitely. Yeah, absolutely. So you've got a degree in mechanical engineering. Is that, did you, you achieve that degree? I know at one point you were working towards it. You, you recently got that degree? 
Yeah, I did. I just graduated oh, in December. Oh, gosh. Well, first of all, congratulations. congratulations. Thank you. That's amazing. That's a pretty hard degree, I feel like. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, d I definitely uh, <laughs> lost lots of sleep over the last few years. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's sure. <laughs> Had my share of mental breakdowns, yeah. but, uh, yeah. you know, I survived and uh, made it through eventually. Do you think um, the information you got from that degree, is that helpful to you now in your racing career? Yeah, absolutely. Because, um, well, one, it just, like, it makes me understand the way, you know, a very, you know, typical engineers operate and how they think. And and it can be, you know, you, you hear a lot about, like, how the drivers can kind of get frustrated sometimes when they're working with their engineers because, it's uh, they just think differently and um, it's it's hard for the two worlds to kind of come together. So uh, I think it's like really vital for me, like to be able to tell an engineer um, kind of uh, what I'm thinking as a driver, but translate it to where they kind of understand it more. Absolutely. And then, we, you know, optimize the car better. Yeah. Well, an engineer. So Molly's an attorney. I'm a nurse. Um, and engineers are definitely included in another profession that you kind of speak a different language than the normal yeah. people. Um, and so, yeah, I'm sure that that makes a big difference where you're able to explain it to your engineers in, you know, in, in engineer lingo. Yeah. Yeah. And if, uh, you know, as I have my degree now, so if, you know, if they're racing, <laughs> hopefully, you know, I'm not going to knock on wood, but yeah. if, uh, you know, if I need to, I can go get an engineering job. And if I become, you know, a design engineer or, you know, a race engineer, it's super helpful to be able to get that input from the drivers. And so I would be able to kind of, I think, relay it and translate it into, you know, a, a new um, iteration for the car if I needed to, you know, if, if I was on the other side of the fence. Absolutely. Well, hopefully uh, you don't have to fall back on that degree. We're, uh, we're thinking <laughs> you're going to go pretty far, but that's just our opinion. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I, I hope so as well. So <laughs> we'll see. But it's nice to have, you know, as a, as a kind of a backup plan. So Absolutely. Um, so tell us some of your interests uh, outside the car. What do you like to do in the rest of your life? Um... I really like being outdoors, and obviously, I'm from Colorado, so <laughs> growing up, you know, doing a lot of outdoor activities, and um, college, though, has brought me a new appreciation for naps, <laughs> because oh, I was really yeah. tired. Yep. <laughs> so, uh, I mean, I don't need those definitely not near as much now, but, um, you know, I, I just like being, you know, hiking. We have lots of great hiking where I'm from, and, and skiing when you get a chance to do it, and mm. Skiing was terrible this year, unfortunately, but uh, um, it's just stuff like that. And I, I love animals, honestly, and I just love dogs. Anybody that knows me, I just love dogs. So I'm sitting, actually sitting here right now with my dog talking to you guys. We're, so, we're sitting here with Molly's dog, actually. So it's oh. fine. <laughs> the dogs are on the podcast as well. It's okay. So They're what kind great. of a dog do you have? I have a chocolate lab. Well, it's, I guess it's technically my dad's, but... Eh. Yeah. He's, he sleeps with me every every time I'm home, so. That means he's, he's yours. He's yours. Yeah. He's, he's right. right. He's yeah. right. No, no, no. Aw. But, yeah, they're, they're great, and, you know, I feel like they just make your day happy, and you can never really be too sad when they're around, so. Uh, they're they're definitely good for your soul. Definitely. Definitely. Well, um, so since you grew up in Colorado, I say, did you enjoy the Winter Olympics this year? Um, I watched them, but I didn't watch them near as much as I normally would. I think I was somewhere, I think I was actually racing for most of it, and I wasn't, like, in town. But I did watch some of it, and I watched the, I watched, obviously watched Sean White's, you know, his comeback run, and then um, watched Lindsey Vaughn's last, I think it's her last Olympics, so that was, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, it was kind of a nostalgic moment to watch her do that. And then uh, I watched a little bit of the figure skating, but I kind of wish I would have seen more of it, because I think it's, like, it's amazing what they can do. So, especially on, like, a little tiny blade, it's just, like, for me, like, I'm terrible at ice skating, and so <laughs> I just very much appreciate what they're able to do. Absolutely. Yeah, no, it's, it's completely amazing to me. I would I would one hundred percent break all of the bones yep. in my body if I tried that. Oh yeah. Just yeah. It. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's 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 unbelievable what they can do. And just like it, it, my ankles always hurt so much when I go and I feel like their ankle strength has just gotta be ridiculous. So I agree. <laughs> Any, well, I mean anything in general. They're they're just like super fit, but it's it's pretty cool to watch what what they can do. Oh definitely. Absolutely.
Especially in tiny little outfits. That's like... <laughs> Well, and I actually, I read a funny article um, that talked about how figure skating is the only sport where one of the things you're judged on is how ridiculously hard the program is athletically and how well you appear that you're doing it effortlessly. I'm like, you know what, that's true. In every other sport, it's okay for you to, you know, for your the look on your face to very much show that you are... You know, working your ass off. Working, yeah. But in figure skating, That's like, they so smile funny. and just look effortless. <laughs> I guess I didn't really think about that. I didn't realize that they, like, couldn't, you know, make a, gr- I guess, a grunt face. Like, I'm pretty sure I make kinds yeah. of faces when I'm driving, so. Grunt face, yeah, no, those, those happen. Yeah. yeah <laughs> or, like, like the whole fitness. stick the tongue out where you, like, <laughs> I definitely do that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think you're allowed to, as a race car driver, make those faces. So, yeah. no, that's okay. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Oh, all right. What's your, what's, do you have any funny stories of uh, practice days, race days, where it seemed like just kind of everything went wrong or it was just kind of one thing after another? Oh, gosh. Lots. I've, I've had plenty of those, unfortunately. <laughs> 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 I'll rag on my dad a little bit, I guess, like, because he was uh, my mechanic for so long, because, you know, it's, it's expensive to, ha- to hire, you know, uh, one on your own and a really proper one, but, uh, so my dad was uh, would always help wrench for me and, and carting, and <laughs> there were days where I love my father, but he is, like, very much, like, he's pulled a million different directions a lot, and he tries uh-huh. to do way too much, <laughs> and then, you know, you go out, and, like, before I could really kind of take care of my cart on my own, you know, go out, and, oh, well, the wheel just fell off, oh, well, the chain fell off, oh, well, the, the silencer just fell off, and it's like, Dad, <laughs> and I guess uh, one of the, the, the most funny it points um that people like on our carding team recall with me i guess at one point i was probably maybe like 15 16 or something and uh, it was a big race and finally something something else had fallen off my cart and i guess i came in and i was like dad shit has got to have fallen off my go-kart and like in front of everybody and they just laughed and just i don't know why but that was just like the they remind me of it constantly because they said it was just so it was a really funny moment entertaining for them so yeah, i guess just, that's one of the funnier funnier moments that is really funny dad shit has got to stop falling off my my car <laughs> yeah um, it's i mean it happens so yeah. um he did it you know i've had a, a been really really blessed to have a dad that is um super supportive and mm-hmm. you know not like over super overbearing i mean he does obviously any dad gets overbearing at one point but yeah. you know he's uh he's never been like the you know the crazy super like intense t-ball dads but he's always you know supported me and believed in me so i i definitely um and it, you know his support like is i think it's like we kind of have a special thing going because he also was kind of in in a similar sport and situation so he can really relate to me whereas some you know some other parents maybe can't as well mm-hmm. so it's it's really nice to be able to to have a dad that i can talk to about that stuff Absolutely. that's pretty amazing that's, yeah that is that's a that's a good dad right there <laughs> he's a good dad <laughs> So do you, do you have like a hype song that you have to listen to before you get ready for a big race? Um, I, I have I actually have like a Spotify playlist that I made <laughs> that it's, uh, I mean, it's kind of, it honestly depends on, sure. uh, you know, it's, it goes back to the mentality thing to where I need to make myself get into the, you know, the right kind of mental state. And so sometimes maybe I'm, you know, not as like hyped up as I need to be. So then I'll listen to a specific kind of song or actually try to, um, you know, how a lot of the motocross guys or skiers or, you know, just any other athletes, they usually, you know, warm up and get their, their heart rate up before they actually go out and perform. So I, I actually think that some, that a lot of times in cars, like we don't really, you know, you don't see that as much. And I think it's actually really something really important that more of us should start doing because, you know, it's just better for your muscles. It's better for your performance. And um, so I'll do that, you know, and sometimes just getting your heart rate up, it will alert your senses. And it's good to be a little nervous, makes you more alert and uh, more, you know, better reactions. And so I'll, I'll do that. And then, um, but sometimes I'll be too, like, jazzed up and I'll be, like, kind of overdriving or, you know, and I need to kind of, 
refocus and calm down and just kind of focus on having fun. So Mm -hmm. then I could listen to another playlist to kind of get my mindset back towards that. So it's, it's all about, you know, balancing it and, and making sure I'm in the right place and maybe sometimes if I'm like super tired if you take like a quick power nap and make sure you don't sleep more than like 20 minutes and because then you go into like a a REM sleep or something like that but you know it can kind of refresh you and hydrate and make sure you're hydrated and 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 all that stuff and actually take um there's a uh what's it called it's a like a supplement line and it's called Advocare Mm -hmm. and they have a a a supplement that's called spark and it's literally just amino acids and you know electrolytes and has a little bit of caffeine in it so i will take that even sometimes when i was studying it kind of just like gives you a little more mental clarity and just kind of gives your body the nutrition it needs to kind of get going (laughs) so it's it's not nothing like super like you know crazy pre-workout like jittery kind of thing uh no, it's so it just kind of depends on on where I assess that my mental state is at or where my body is at, hmm. and then I'll kind of just go from there and and make sure I I prepare myself in uh, in the right way before I go out. That's very smart. Yeah, <laughs> I never thought about having kind of like a a warm up period before you get in the car to drive. That that actually makes a lot of sense, though. No, it does. I, yeah. <laughs> I do this thing where, like, in carding, I would, like, um, cannot kind of where you, like, you know where you go to hug someone and you kind of cross your arms, but if you swing them fast enough ah. and you alternate which arm goes on top, like, that's actually, like, a really good one to get your, that's you know, it activates your upper body and your abs and your core and your back muscles and your shoulder muscles, and so that's, like, a, one of the really good exercises I'll do just kind of quickly before before I get in the car and... Um, I think it'd be super cool if I had like a trainer and like, uh, like a bike trainer where you can set your bike up on it and do oh. like a light spin before you go out. And yeah. I think that would be awesome, but it's been a little, it's a little difficult to travel with a bike. So oh, yeah. <laughs> I haven't figured that one out yet. <laughs> yeah. That would be a little bit, a little hard. I, I, I would think. Um, yeah, but they definitely like motocross guys and supercross guys will do like that's something that they do before before they go out for their for their events and sessions. So um, it's definitely like something that other athletes use. And uh, I think it's just important to to kind of get your get yourself warmed up, ready to go. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> uh, it, yeah, definitely. Definitely. Um, well, here's something we always like to ask. What is a hidden talent or skill that you have that maybe a lot of people don't know that you have? Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> I can, I actually, um, I can, I can sing pretty decently. I was oh. in like honor choir all throughout high school and I used to do like some plays and musicals and stuff. So, uh, and uh, sometimes I'll like do national anthems and stuff for like local events, but so that's, I guess, one of them. And I also like to, um, like, draw and paint more of an artistic side. So I guess I have, like, that as well as, like, the racing and the engineering. So kind of polar opposites in a way. Absolutely. Yeah, that's, they are. That's excellent. That's amazing. That's both sides of the brain. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Yeah. No, I think it's good to exercise all all of it because it's uh, – it kind of relaxes, gives the other side a break. And sometimes you look at things in a different way. If you kind of, you know, like it's like a muscle, you know, you Mm -hmm. have to kind of allow it to relax and maybe do an exercise a different way to confuse the muscle in order to, you know, gain strength and your brain is is the same way. So Mm -hmm. just doing, doing just kind of out of the box things to try and always, you know, make improvements. That's, Pretty awesome. That's a that's a very nice talent to have to have to have to have, have actually. So, uh, <laughs> I mean, maybe if the anthem singer accidentally calls in sick at the five hundred, we might have a backup here. Is what I'm thinking. Oh my god, yeah. I am so bad at like, <laughs> I get a little bit of stage fright when I sing. Like that's so that's why like choir was nice because you were like up there with a bunch yeah. of people. But uh, <laughs> I would have to definitely like maybe stare at a wall and like not look out at all the people. <laughs> But, uh, you know, I could, I could do it, but it definitely, I would get probably like way, like a million times more nervous for that than I would if I was actually driving. <laughs> oh, absolutely. <laughs> oh, no, but that, yeah, I, yes, I get that. Singing the National Anthem in the 500. Uh, yeah, that would be terrifying. Yeah. Absolutely. That would be like, that's a really big order for sure. That's yeah. like oh, superstar level, like people that need to be singing that. <laughs> right? 
Well, and Molly and I are both musical as well. Um, and I actually, I went to a high school, and our band marches around the track the morning of the Indy 500. And, That's and, awesome. Yeah, it's super cool. But yeah, that is very similar to a choir. You know, you are performing as part of an ensemble. Yeah, um, yeah. You know, it's like that didn't feel nerve-wracking. But yeah, to be a soloist, no, no. I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe with enough practice, like, you know, you do enough things that scare you and it gets easier, right? There you go. But yeah, it's 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 definitely it's it's something different for sure. Yeah. But what instruments do you guys play? Well, we both play piano. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, Molly that's amazing! Plays, <laughs> Thank yeah, you. <laughs> um, and then Molly plays the oboe as well, and I play the French horn. So we're not. We're Dang! Not... Look at you guys. You just have <laughs> <everything. laughs> yeah, it's real fun at parties because we just know classical music. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, that's okay. Yeah, that's all fine. We can't really. I know, like, I can read music enough to where, like, I can be dangerous on the piano and just like (laughs) kind of pick something out. But uh, definitely, definitely need to learn to play it fluently. But uh, I definitely admire people that can play like that. It's it's really (laughs) really beautiful to listen to. It's it's a lot of fun. It doesn't like the bike. It doesn't travel well though. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, Yeah, I can totally understand. I'm like, I should have learned how to play the guitar. That's so much easier to take places. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, you could get like a keyboard i guess yeah, it's but. still pretty big <laughs> well the horn probably is easier to transport right yeah yeah but uh yeah, awesome. nobody's that's... sitting around a campfire with a french horn i'll tell you that <laughs> that's true <laughs> might be <laughs> <It's> loud <laughs> yeah i say it's really great in an ensemble for like christmas music it's always french horn and oboe solos but uh oh gotcha <laughs> yeah, we're not gonna sit around and yeah Buzzed out. <laughs> yeah, Tom Petty on the French horn. <laughs> that oh gosh, now I'm gonna be tickled with that for a couple of days. Yeah, oh. I bet I, I bet I could play Mary Jane's Last Dance on the French horn. But... There you go. New, new, All right. new goal, new goal for this year. <laughs> so outside of the the carts and everything that you've driven, what's your favorite street car to drive? Oh, uh, I mean, I haven't had a privilege of like uh, driving that many like street cars obviously like i have a toyota rav4 <laughs> that i ride around because nice. it's safe and yeah. you know it, it's very slow <laughs> and somehow i managed to still get a speeding ticket in it several times which i'm <laughs> not proud of but um it's uh it's amazing in the snow though i, I do have to say that and that was like the big thing for me just like being able to, especially with how much snow we get around oh, gosh, um, yeah. Golden, where I was going to school, so it's uh, I definitely always felt safe making sure I, I had that. And uh, but I'm trying to get. I really, really wish I had a manual um, daily driver, to be honest. But uh, it's very hard to find all-wheel drive manual cars. Yes. So uh, I'm currently looking actually to try and see if I can get a trade in or anything. But there's a few BMWs, but most of it is you know it's a Subaru kind of thing. So yeah. it's. Uh, but also, you know, I tend to have a, I have an expensive hobby right now, so that's kind of on the back burner, obviously. But right oh. now, the Rav Four is uh, still, still, it does me, it does good, and it transports my bike, so yeah, there you go. so it all works out. And my dog, it's a good, it's a good transport for the dog too. Uh, yeah, that's always an important thing. Does the yes. dog like the car? Yeah. <laughs> Definitely, I need to get a cover for it, though, because he is definitely going through that spring oh, shedding right now. It is gosh. ridiculous. Oh, yeah. I'm lucky enough, mine mine doesn't shed, but my parents have a long-haired German shepherd who... Oh, goodness. I think loses four pounds of hair every other week, so I understand the shedding in the car. Yeah, you could probably make another dog out of the hair, right? I can. Absolutely. Yeah, I can. It's, it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun on clothes. <laughs> yes, people very much appreciate it. You know, when you <laughs> like, sorry about all that hair. <laughs> right, brush yeah. it off. <laughs> it's my car. You're just gonna have to deal with it. <laughs> what I yeah. tell them. Sorry, it's my car. What do you want? So yeah, always keep the the sticky lint roller in the car when you when you have yes. Yeah, they, you're gonna have to like get roller. stuck in the seat though. They like yes. the little hairs. They like get stuck under the fabric, and you're just, yes. there's literally nowhere way else to get it out other than pulling it out one by one. Yep, with your hands. Yep, I've been there. <laughs> <laughs> so, what is the next race for you coming up? I 
I'm I'm actually going to uh, VRI for the first time next week. Okay. My uh, one of my main sponsors, uh, Apple Motorsports and Aspen Equity Group. They're kind of one and the same. Um, my sponsor's racing his own. He has a GT um, Porsche Cup car, 2007, I believe it is. Okay. And so he is. It's amazing. He wheels that thing around, and he's about 71 years old now. And he, it's. I'm very impressed with like with his uh, car control, and like that thing is wicked fast in a straight line. So it's really cool to watch him drive that. Oh, and, wow. Um, so I'm excited to see the track too, because you know it's obviously a well-known track here in the U.S. And um, I haven't seen it in person yet so i'm excited to go do that awesome and now on the monster road to indy what's your next stop monster road indy is the indy gp the usf 2000 unfortunately doesn't go do you know like the they didn't do phoenix or yeah. barber or anything like that so we've got like a whole nother month before yeah. we're we're back in the cars and everything so but the it'll be nice because i've actually ran the indy gp course before or at least a very close version of it mm -hmm. for the runoffs that were there last year so oh, i'm excited nice. to go back and um really like the track in the area so it'll it'll it's always good to go to indy so okay. I'm, I'm excited for that it is a lovely <laughs> area if we can say that out loud <laughs> <laughs> yeah and bell is also opening up their like brand yeah. new store like downtown and so i'm really like stoked to go see that as a bell athlete and they've been working super hard on it so uh definitely definitely excited to go do that and have some friends there so it'll be it'll be a good good week or a good month, I suppose, because the Indy, the 500, you know, and the our oval race, the one oval race we do is is uh, shortly after. So yeah. it'll be good. Awesome. Awesome. Well, before I forget, I want to have you tell everybody what your social media is, where they can find you. Okay. Um, Facebook, it's uh, it's just Sabra Cook Racing, S-A-B-R-E-C-O-O-K, and then Racing is a fan page. And then um, on Instagram, it's just Sabra Cook. Uh, Twitter, it's Sabra underscore Cook. Um, kind of, if you just search my name, basically, <laughs> you'll kind of find uh, find what you need. And then uh, my current website is uh, sabracookracing.com. Awesome. Excellent. Awesome. And then, uh, so... I know you, you said you, you know, it is an expensive hobby, uh, so do you have any sponsors you want to recognize right now, and is there any way that, you know, what, what are some ways that, that fans can help you out, you know, make some sponsors they can support, or I know you're probably always open to some new sponsorship. Um, always yeah you know um just trying to make the right connections with um the right people that i have really great people around me right now like apple motorsports and aspen Equ equity group and uh, bell helmets and um coda karting actually just joined on um, recently so really excited for them they're putting me to do the the indy gp race so super appreciative for their new involvement and then also mesa fitness and um great jokes motor speedway just local companies here that you know help me um just make sure i get track time and and um get my you know have somewhere where i can train and work out and the right kind of trainers and, and nutritionists around me that i can consult and and just make sure my performance physically and mentally are, are where they need to be so um those are the great people i have around me right now always of course looking for for other partners and um you know trying to always have meetings and calls i'm making sure. to to make it happen and um you know, if, if you guys know anybody or anybody listening knows somebody that would, would love to help me, you know, it's unfortunately a very expensive sport and as much as we wish it was like a traditional sport, it's not. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that's just kind of all that matters to keep going in the, in the USF 2000 series right now. I'm actually, I have about, um, I'm actually not confirmed for the whole season cause I, I haven't gathered enough funding or support mm -hmm. to do the full one. So right now just, um, you know, taking it a couple races at a time and just pushing to get that, that ultimate budget to do, to do the full year all the way through August. Sure. And if, they go to your website is there a way if somebody knows somebody they can direct it to your website and there's somewhere to contact like you and your team through that website yeah yeah there, there's there's a contact form um awesome. you just go to my website and you should it'll send me and uh, my media team an email so um rtd media also does a great job with all my marketing and social media stuff so if uh 
if you guys need anything for that, they are the people to go to for sure. They, they're a super great team and um, just great people to work with. Really, really cool. Well, before yeah. we end, what else, anything else you want to let the people listening at home to know about um, you? <laughs> I'll let you have the last word. It's, it's, it's oh, a good man. thing. Okay. <laughs> um, I guess, I don't know, maybe I feel like I've talked about myself a lot. So, that's um, that's what you're supposed thanks, to do. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I guess just thanks for, thanks for watching and or listening. And um, thank you guys for, for having me on. And thank you so very much. We, uh, this has been a great interview. I'm so excited to see what you do. And this has been a great interview. And I'm so thankful that you took the time to come on. No, thank you guys. I, you know, I always love doing interviews and especially like with women, it's super, super nice to actually like have women, you know, commentators that are asking the questions and <laughs> out there spreading the word and talking about race cars. So uh, I think it's really awesome that you guys have this program going. Well, thank you. Well, thank you. <laughs> All right. Well, next opportunity to see Sabra race is going to be in the support race to the Indy GP, which kicks off in about two weeks. Oh, my God. It sure does. It's going to be May. It's going to be May. Sorry. Oh, uh, hashtag this is May. So, yeah, we'll just go ahead and throw out our plug for the uh, Indy yeah. Car GP right now. Yep. Uh, get your tickets. Please. Get your tickets and go. It's it's fun. It's not as expensive as the Indy 500. It's a good day. It's a great day to bring kids. It is. Heck, Get the uh, get the general admission, and you can sit on the mounds. You can walk around. You can check stuff out. Because if you're worried about your kids getting bored and you're on the mounds, well, there's lots of grass. So they can roll down. They can they can run around and get some energy out, mm -hmm. and you can watch a race and keep an eye on them. And uh, everybody wins. Everybody gets a good day at the track. So everybody it's a great wins. family day at the track, and uh, and lots of good racing because we've got yeah, we've got the. Um, support series. The support, thank you. Yeah. The support series races and then an IndyCar race. So make sure you come out to the track May 11th and May 12th. Definitely. And we'll be there. We will be there. So if you're there, make sure you hit us up on social media. Uh, <laughs> and we will probably arrange some sort of tweet up, maybe let, let you guys know where we're at and what time if anybody wants to come by and say hi. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, so watch our social media. You can find everything you need on fastcarsfastgirls.com. We are also on Facebook. Uh, we are on Twitter at fastcars and 317 at, on Instagram at fastcarsfastgirls. Uh, we also have a YouTube. Mm -hmm. Make sure you check that out. We had an amazing video drop this week, courtesy of my co-host. Uh, because before May, the last event before May is the Mutt Strut. Yep. And so Molly put together a, an awesome <laughs> video about uh, the, the training for, for her dogs. Team Fast so, Cars, Fast Girls. Excuse you. Yes. Team Fast Cars, Fast Girls. And they're both female dogs. So. Yeah. So, yes, she put an amazing video. I, I liken it to the, the montage in a Rocky movie. Thank you. That's kind of what I was going for. I, I, I figured as much. And, yes, you, you succeeded. That, that, that video is awesome. Oh, it makes me laugh every time I see it. Only because I know uh, the dogs. Well, I, yeah, knowing both dogs. And they both can be such spazzes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so it's going to be yeah. real fun this Saturday at the Mutstra. Oh, hilarious hilarious so yeah so make sure you check that out yeah we're on youtube yeah and uh you can find us at any podcast uh hosting site which if you're listening you probably already have okay. uh but <laughs> you also can listen to us on our website make sure that you subscribe like rate review all that good stuff share us with your friends and family Definitely. all right i think that about sums it up for business well uh, i did oh, want to except yeah oh i did want to again promote another business Okay. Uh, White Rabbit Copy, yep. whiterabbitcopy.com for all your printing, copy, and graphic design needs. Make sure you hit them up. They've been a wonderful partner with us. Yes. Uh, their prices are great. The owner's awesome. All their staff are wonderful to deal with. You will not find better customer service for print, copy, or graphic design needs. I guarantee you that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It cannot. You will not find a better person to work with. So make sure you check out White Rabbit Copy. We really appreciate them supporting the show. Yeah. Definitely we do. We do. It's great. Um, before we flip over, I did, we talked about the mutt strut this weekend, and I think people also should know that Monday, Tuesday, and actually Wednesday, um, cars are going to be on the track, and it is not tire testing for once. It is not tire testing. Uh, uh, so <laughs> <laughs> Monday, April 30th, is the reschedule. Uh, 
all driver yeah. test at IMS uh, that was moved from March for inclement weather. Yep. And so, and there's a list of all the drivers and it's everybody that's not a rookie yeah. um, and everybody that does not need a refresher. Tuesday, May 1st is ROP and refresher. So all of our rookies, which would we say there were like nine this year, some shit oh, like that. Yes. Yeah. Um, Maybe not. A I mean, that's, nine. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, but it, 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 it's close to being like half of the field attempting to qualify for the Indy 500 is going to be a rookie yeah. or not half a third. Yeah. Uh, close to a third of the field. Yeah. It's, pretty pretty wild and then uh the refresher okay. courses so for anybody who hasn't raced in an indy car recently uh has to do a refresher course so that'll be danica patrick has to do a refresher course just yeah. like when michael andretti came back and raced when it was marco's first year marco had to do rookie orientation rop yep. michael had to do the refresher because it had been so many years which that one made me laugh because and Andretti sitting in a refresher course. Right. You know, you know, every other driver in that refresher course was like, are you fucking kidding me? Or they were just giving him the business. <laughs> I would give him the business or I would say maybe even like super intimidated because he's probably sitting in the back. It's probably like when I go to an EKG class yeah. uh, that I could easily teach. I just sit in the back and I just judge everything the teacher says. And I'm like, no. No, wrong. <laughs> no, that's good. Conf- you said that you said that in a confusing way. Michael's wrong. probably sitting in the back. Right. He probably was like playing on his phone. <laughs> Napping. Yeah. They were like, uh, Michael, can we help you? He's like, do you need help? Cause I can. <laughs> no, you cannot. No, thank you. I, I, I've got a few things to add. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. So, so yeah, so Monday and Tuesday, that'll be a great time. It will be a great time. I can't wait to go. I'm very excited. And, uh, we're meeting up with a few people there. Uh, we are actually gonna. We're actually meeting up with Simon Pagano's spotter. Yeah, that'll be on fun. Monday. So that'll be fun. Get a get a little inside scoop on on the things they look for at the IMS. Yeah. So that'll be. And then what else were you? Yeah. Sorry. What else were you gonna add? I was just gonna make sure that we plug that we're gonna be at testing and RP. So definitely follow us on show, social media because we'll have it across all platforms. We certainly will, and our Snapchat will be alive and well. We'll be activated. Uh, Yes, we activate any days that we're at the track. Yes. So Snapchat is Fast Cars FST GRLS. Yeah, ran out of L's. Sure did. Yeah. In retrospect, I probably should have done FC FG, but I don't. Vodka, vodka was involved. Yeah, I don't know if we can even change it. So who knows? No, I don't think so. Okay. I mean, we'd have to create a new one, and it just I just I'm not don't doing care. That. I'm not. I'm not doing that. Um, how about a quick roundup of other motorsports? NASCAR. So Bristol raced on. Last Monday, and I don't think we actually talked about it when we, no, because we recorded earlier. So Kyle Busch won at Bristol, and then Kyle Busch won on Richmond, and then they're at Talladega this upcoming week. Well, and the Richmond race, uh, that was his third in a row. Yes. Because it was this whole thing, is he going to get three in a row again? Because he's done it before. He's done a three-peat um, two times before, I think. I don't know. How many so this was before? his third three-peat. So there you go. Kyle Busch. So, and I only know that because a lot of my patients had NASCAR on in their <laughs> rooms. And every time I looked up and saw NASCAR, it just made me sad that I wasn't watching IndyCar. You died a little bit inside. I did. I did. You're like, but, but can we switch over to NBC Sports? Right. Or can you at least turn the volume down so yeah. I don't have to listen to the script? <laughs> uh, so there was no F1 this week. Um this upcoming weekend, they will be at Azerbaijan, so the GP there, and maybe it'll get rained out. We'll see. We'll see. And then NH- NH- yeah, it NHRA. Yeah. Is- NHRA. So I did happen to be lucky enough. Uh, Brittany Force, it was Spring Nationals. Yep. And um, I was lucky enough to see her winning race. Oh, awesome. She- yeah, it was perfect timing. I was in a patient room. They had on uh, whatever network it was on. Wow. And... Literally, we were mid conversation, and then I heard something, and I looked up, and I see Courtney Force mm-hmm. and John Force. You know, they show them, and they're standing and you know looking on. And then I look up, but I realize that it's Brittany in the car. Yeah, and she was racing against the number two guy, and she was number sixteen at the time. Oh, wow. And I turned to the patient. I was like, "I'm sorry, can you hold on a second? I was like, "I, I have to watch this." <laughs> sorry. And uh, yeah, completely professional. Well, uh, fine. That's fine. yeah, <laughs> right. I mean. You know, I'm a real person too. So, so yeah, so I actually got to see it and it was amazing. She killed it. Yeah. And then, and they showed, 
I mean, immediately went back to John and Courtney Force, and I mean, the two of them just elated, just giddy. It was, Aww. you know, it's just, it just, I love their family. I do too. And, yeah, they're they're so cute. I know. Uh, and I just love John Force. Like he just seems like such a fun dad. Right. Like I want to go have a beer, and we've talked about this: a beer, and I'm sure that they would like maybe a cigar with John Force. Yeah. Are probably, I think we decided that they probably drink whiskey. I think they start off with beer, and then for their cigars, it's like a whiskey or a bourbon yes. or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. They 100%. I mean, all the four sisters 100% seem like they would sip on a nice glass of, like, bourbon, whiskey, or scotch and have mm -hmm. a cigar. Definitely. And, yeah, that seems like, you know, and that that would not be out of the realm at all. And if somebody says otherwise, just don't tell us. Don't ruin this for us. Yeah, don't ruin it. Don't ruin it. Uh, now, in other NHRA news, John Force yeah. did not qualify for the first time in, well, prior to this, he had had 221 consecutive races. Yeah. And he actually did not qualify. Uh, and so he put out a statement and apologized to his fans and all that, which, you know, I always think is nice. Uh, I, don't, I don't think that it's necessary. We've discussed, you know, what I think that people should expect from athletes. Right. Uh, and I don't think that they owe you anything other than to just do their best. Uh, and he did, you know, and he just said, you know, they, they didn't have it all together. You know, he gave props to his crew and all that, you know, just said he was disappointed and apologized to the fans who'd come out to see him yeah. since he didn't end up, you know, making it in, but you know, that they'll, improve and do better next time so you know that's kind of that's unfortunate for john it is well he had that kind of horrific i mean he walked away from it, but he had that bad crash a while back and so maybe there's just some lingering like pt issues that they're still working on i don't know it just seems who knows? yeah there absolutely could be uh or it could just be i mean maybe there were some just, car issues behind yeah. the scenes we don't know about you never know i Something. mean there's there's so many factors oh yeah it could just be the web i mean anything could happen so absolutely definitely yeah. All right. Well, let's, let's go down south. Get, let's go down south. Let's go to Alabama. So, All right. Roll Tide, baby. Oh, there it is. I have, <laughs> somebody I've, had to say it. Somebody had to say it. You know, I'm a Big Ten, not SEC, so whatever. <laughs> yeah, we are. Big Ten for life. Faux life. Anyway. Faux life. Who, who, who? Who's yours? Damn right. <laughs> it was also a little five weekend earlier, so. Oh, it was, yeah. and I love that you uh, tweeted out something, because, yeah, my to... two oldest nieces were at Little Five. Aww. My oldest niece is in college. My second oldest niece is a senior in high school, uh, and Little Five was over prom weekend. And she went to prom last year, but didn't really have a great time. Sure. And uh, so she decided this year, rather than follow the crowd, and she's my, uh, she and I are kindred spirits. This is my niece that she and I are so much alike, it's unreal. Yeah. And so she wasn't going to go with the crowd. She didn't want to conform and go with the crowd. She thought, I didn't have a great time last year. I'm going to do what I want to do. And so she went down and spent the weekend with her sister and had a great time at Little Five. Because that's what you do. That's what you do. And honestly, I went to prom all four years of high school. Uh, and if I had the choice between prom and Little Five, I'd choose Little Five every damn time. Yeah. Yeah. It's a great time, and and Cutter's won, so I'm very very proud of that. Very exciting. Uh, all right. So anyway, back to Alabama. Back to Alabama. All right. Practice sessions. Uh, I think only one thing needs to be discussed in practice session. Turn five. Turn fucking five. Oh my I think gosh. At least at least eight people bid it in turn five, and I'm, I I they... might have missed people. <laughs> I mean, honestly, everybody was losing their shit in turn five. Everybody was. And you know, an interesting fact that they that they said that the announcer said is that that course, and I'm sure this has to do with the the design, the layout of it, and you know, both in a 2D model and then also with the elevation changes, mm -hmm. this course actually has the highest G forces of any road course. That doesn't surprise me with the elevation changes. And so, like, yeah, the turn five is a hairpin downhill turn. Yes. So yeah, I mean that's a that's a recipe, and and I think. Not the first session, but maybe second session where you had gotten everybody, the wind had shifted, and so it was kind of pushing them through the turn, or down the turn and not across the turn. Yes. So that might have been why two-thirds of the people who bid it, bid it more in, turn, in, in practice session two than one or three. Yeah, I think you're correct. Although Newgarden bit, New Garden bit it, bit it in, in one. A practice one. Yeah, yeah, he bit it in one. Uh, and I will say with the G-forces, poor Zach Beach. Oh, my gosh. And he was sick, too. 
That's what I'm saying. Poor Zach Aww. Beach because he had food poisoning. Ugh. And I can tell you, I've had food poisoning before, and it's awful. It's not good. And so to add G-forces, I mean, somebody likened it to, you know, getting on a roller coaster over mm-hmm. and over and over again after you've been sick. And I was like, that sounds like the worst thing ever. And I'm sure that's exactly what it feels like. Yeah. I don't know how, I don't know how that kid did it. I know they had medical staff on hand. He got like four liters of fluids. Yeah. He got IV anti-nausea meds. Uh, I can, I, I, I could probably get, I'm sure it was Zofran because the yeah, rest probably. of them sedate you. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and then I, and then I thought, Andretti, Hey, Hey, Andretti auto sport. I am happy to be the team's first little nurse. I am awesome at starting IVs. I can do it with my eyes closed. I know exactly how to help situations like that. I'm just put it out there. I, I'd be I would happy agree. to be the concierge nurse for any racing team. I would agree to this. I, I wholeheartedly endorse. Yeah. I give absolutely. my endorsement. Uh, <laughs> oh, so, yeah. So, practice one. And Rossi, um, he actually went off in turn 16 on practice one. Yeah, that was weird. Yeah, and that ended up being a red flag because he had to get towed. Yeah, he had to get though he did plow through an ATM sign or something like that, and so I had to laugh. Yeah, that made that made me chuckle. Uh, oh, going back to Beach, one of the things they talked about, uh, just you know, with the the decisions, you know, because last year when they picked Beach, we all thought, you know, that's an interesting choice. Yeah. Uh, but Andretti's one of those teams, you know, they have four cars and. They they like to have, you know, more seasoned drivers and then bring in a new guy every now and then so that they can grow them and coach them and get them, you know, to hopefully championship status. And so they actually signed a three year deal with Beach yes. so that he can, quote, learn and grow, which I think is and fantastic. I think it is fantastic. And all I wrote down in my notes for that was take note, Larry Foy. Yeah. Thanks, Larry. Yeah. By the way, how did your cars do this time, Larry? Not that great. Yeah. Yeah, why doesn't somebody tell us how AJ Foy, Foy they, racing is better this year than last year? You know, they, I'll tell you what. They've stopped saying that. Uh, good. They, it, was I, dumb, it, it was dumb the first time they said it. It's only getting more ridiculous. Right. Like, no, sorry. TK bit it in calls. Laced had an issue during the before the race even started. And then TK uh, stalled dur- during, like, one of the restart. The I don't know which restart. But, yeah. One of those laps, he stalled. He sure did. So, yep, really turn so, that around there, guys. I know. I will say that I will stop talking shit about AJ Foyt racing once we get to the 500 stuff just because Davison. I love Davison. Yeah. And he's with AJ Foyt. And so I think that's the best decision that Foyt racing has made this year. Uh, I was not – I'm not unhappy with the TK decision. I was not at the time, and I'm not now. I love TK, and I right. love that he's got a home there. Sure. Um, and I think that that's a great fit, but – I mean, I'm, I'm still bitter about Connor. I'm just overall still salty with Foyt Racing. And I'm just I'm just still salty. And honestly, I love Munoz, too. So I'm just, yeah. Yeah. I'm displeased. Oh, I agree. I agree. So let's see. Practice two. 18, uh, Sebastian Bourdais got off the, the track and had the best, almost fucked up his car ever. But, he but like narrowly missed, missed the tire barrier, the wall, like by inches. It was like pulling nope. into a parking spot, just soup. Right? It was like he did it on purpose. It was <laughs> unreal. I kind of feel like he might have, like, all right, this is happening. Oh, uh, and then Wickens didn't didn't even get out in practice too because they were trying to figure he out was what was he had some mm-hmm. water leak issues and so they were messing with his car i got really concerned when that happened i was like oh god no he was on such a good like momentum like he was this so yeah that fuck you up right although when they interviewed him you know he was cool as a cucumber um one of the things that i enjoy because they interviewed him about that and they interviewed him about the weather and mm-hmm. one of the things he said was you know that he's always you know his philosophy in life is worry about the things that you can control well you cannot control the weather and so when they were like are you about the weather he's like nope i have no control over that like if it's a wet race it's a wet race if it's a dry race it's a dry race like worry about what you can control he's like we can control the car we can control this like it is what it is yeah and and he's no stranger to driving in the rain he did i think they said eight eight or nine races last year in dtm yeah. Or in the rain. I mean, I, or I, I'm sorry, in the wet. In the wet, yeah. Okay, sure. In the wet. Yeah. Although I will say, you know, a, a DTM car is a, a lot different than an Indy car. car. It, it is a lot different, but sometimes, I but mean, you it's know. still I've, driving fast in the rain on corners or things like that. Like, there's still an inherent skill with that. 
definitely. It's like, you know, driving in the snow or, you know, when you think about our winters here. Yeah. Obviously, you're more comfortable in a vehicle you're more comfortable in. But, like, I've driven in the snow in vans, trucks, cars, you know, yeah. driving in the snow. It's it's a little different on the vehicle, but your basic principles are still the same. Yeah, definitely. So. Yeah. Um, also, I, I found this super interesting about Barber, and I think we all saw this during practices, quals, and the race, mm-hmm. that on paper, it actually should not be a good track to race at. Yeah. Like, the way that it's laid out and on paper, you would think that it would actually not produce good racing for IndyCar, but in actuality, it's nonstop entertainment. See, now, I would disagree because of the different turns and the elevation. It should be a good should, there's a lot of breaking zones is what I always see. That's true. Uh, that's true. But I think just, I guess maybe with the learning curve of that particular track, maybe that's why they, they said on paper it, it is not a great track to race at. But, but yeah, but that makes sense because most of your passes happen in your breaking zones. Yeah, and, the, you know, the elevation adds something to it. So, I, I, you know, I don't know why people say that. It's like the same people who said that this was a boring race. Nope. Yeah, anybody who... It was like, oh, it was follow the leader. It was this. It's it's it, not. It I wasn't. mean, it was it was for a little bit because Newgarden got a great lead, but but back but in the there pack, was, there was passing. Yeah. That's what kills me. Everybody, don't right? Just... Like, are you only watching the first car? Right then, yeah, it will be boring. But you know what? Watch the field. Right when you watch couples figure skating, do you only watch the male or right? only watch the female? <laughs> There's more than one person out there competing. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, it just irritates me. Yes. To no end. Uh, agreed. As you can hear. Agreed. Yeah, um, Pagano went off in turn five as well. Yeah. Let's see. Oh, Bender went into the wall. Yeah, he hit the tire barrier. That was. He sure did. It looked, it looked bad for a moment. It it did actually. Yeah. I was yeah, but it turned out to be okay. Yeah, he. Uh, Marco. Uh, complained that his brakes were spongy during practice too, uh, so they they pitted at some point during the practice and were bleeding, uh, the, the, bleeding some brake fluid off yeah. the lines. You know, he so, just likes to complain. I've decided. I uh, yeah. Yeah. He he just does. Yeah. Um, and but you know what? I'm not going to put him. I'm not going to let him party with P Pants and Cendric. No, not yet. And. Not yet, because not yet. he he is not he doesn't complain about real issues. Well, he did have one legitimate gripe this weekend, but yeah, but yeah, he just he just bitches all the time. Like and that's just his everyday life. So yeah, <laughs> and in my opinion, I don't really know him. Yeah, who knows? Maybe he's fine outside of the track. Ah, uh-huh. anyway. Uh, uh... Let's see. Oh, and there's just some some fun physics stuff. Uh, so they because they switched out their their springs. Um, yeah. Like for their shocks, so they've got two options. One is a softer or a thinner spring, and that is creates more rear grip. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so you have a little bit better control. You have less understeer. Uh, and then the other one is your stiffer or thicker spring, yep. uh, and that is if you have less rear grip, so that makes your car a little more loose. Yes. So there was a lot of play with that this weekend based on the wet versus dry. Yeah. Because you can, you can have that car looser when it's dry because, you know, you can control it better, but you need it to be a little tighter when it's wet. Mm-hmm. Because, yeah, you can hydroplane, you can do all kinds of wild you stuff. Know, shit can pop off. Yeah, shit can pop off like it did. Like it did. Like it did. Um, practice three, Rossi's consistently a badass. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Wasn't they the... actually said there's no one hotter or more consistent right now. And yeah, I thought, well, welcome to the club. <laughs> yeah. Again, thank you. Thank you, everybody. You're, yeah, you're yeah. Every everybody's on the Rossi train. Uh, <laughs> Newgarden actually described the track as driving on a roller coaster. That would make sense with the different elevation changes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and the different like turns. Oh, I like that description. Yeah, I was like, that's a great description. Well, and I'll tell you what, 
because a lot of people who've been to Barber, which we have not yet, yeah. you know, have, have told us and, you know, and they mention on the TV and all that, that you, the, you miss something with the camera view because you miss all the undulations and the track and the sure. elevation changes and all that. And I think that that, that is true for the, the main camera view, but the nose cam oh view. Oh my God, the nose cam at this track was insane. Oh my gosh, you to- you didn't miss anything with the nose cam no. view. I felt like I was in the car. Definitely, like it was absolutely just amazing to to go through those elevation changes like and you're like oh oh, oh, this is so exciting it was awesome yeah and it made like i i want to i want a ride along on that track next year oh yeah that'd be a good track i mean mean, full disclosure abby's fantasy i just want to drive a car balls to the wall on that track by myself well but a ride along on that track would be so much fun so much fun Oh, that'd be great. Uh, let's see. Jordan King stuffed it. He did. Up in two. Uh, he had some substantial left suspension damage. He got it fixed. Uh, yeah, they interviewed Ed Carpenter. He did not seem as upset as I think he probably was on the inside. Uh, but he did say, you know, Jordan's, you know, he's a strong racer. He's been doing well. You know, we're still growing and learning. And then he made a joke. He's like, I mean, we're three for three on the same mistakes at all practices. But <laughs> <laughs> which that made me laugh. I was like, well, yeah, you are. Yeah. I mean, you might as well just call it out and say it. Yeah, you are. Yeah, you know, it's fine. <laughs> and uh, you know what I found interesting in practice three that did not hold true for Qualls uh, is that Ray Hall, to me, seemed to have his shit together. Yeah. better than most of the other drivers like because he was the one who you know we heard complaining a lot in st pete about how the front was tight the back was loose if the back was tight the front was loose yeah and you know and he's mentioned in every race that you know he just he doesn't the car was just too loose. He, yeah he just could not it just hasn't quite found his groove yeah which honestly it's amazing that he has keeps finishing in the top 10 considering that exactly. but yeah practice three he just looked i mean his car just looked tight it when you wash his hands, it seemed effortless. Yeah, he seemed uh, to be really well in P three. Yeah, he did extremely well, and so I thought I, I hope that they figured out you know the back of the car and their understeer issues and all that because he just I mean he just seemed like it was you know a drive in the park to him at practice three. Yeah, and then I don't know what happened in qualifying. Uh, yeah, yeah. So qualifying. So, Yes. I was surprised, given how many people jumped off the track in the prior practices, we only had one kind of incident during quals. We did. And mm-hmm. what's interesting about, I love this rule, and I oh, love they showed so it. And then when they ha- when it happened, they <laughs> flashed it up on the screen. It was very And nice. that is, oh, if you cause a red, mm-hmm. then your two best lap times are taken away. And you don't get to go again. Like, you're done. You, you're you done. Yeah. And no matter where your lap times push you, you do not proceed to the next round. No, you just sit there. You sit, I, sit I in your pit stall and think about what you did. Like, that is cone of shame right there. That is cone of shame, 100%. That is the cone of shame. And then well, happened to Tony. Yeah, uh, TK, yeah. And he was, he was exiting pit lane. He was exiting pit lane. I mean, to be fair, they were new tires, and so, you know, they weren't warm, and I think they just locked up on him, and yeah. And it's also the tightest pit lane after Toronto, so. It it is a very tight pit lane. It's not like, you know, do-do-do-do, it's it's a little tight, but still. No, it actually, it kind of gave me, when they were, when they would be driving into pit lane, it it almost gave me anxiety, like when you're on the interstate and there's construction, so you have the concrete barrier that's super close to your car, that's what it felt like when I was watching them. It just gave me anxiety to when there was rain, because I was like, shit, pit lane's going to be slicky, everything. I can't believe we didn't have, yeah, an incident. Oh my god, there were a few moments, I was like, this is how it's going to go down. (laughs) Uh, oh, so going back to Graham, so he did not do as well in quals no. as he wanted to. They interviewed him afterwards, and he gave complete props to his team and his crew and said that, you know, that it was on, it's on me, yeah. which uh, a, a big a big step for him, it's honestly. Very mature uh, for he, him, yeah. Yeah, he did not come out of the bat griping and, you know, saying, you know, X, y, and bitching T. about yeah, X, Y, and Z, blah, blah. He just came out and he was like, you know, My great man. car, great team, this one's on me. I could have done better. Yeah. So, 
So yeah. he said kudos to Graham Rahal for kudos. Yeah, he, yeah. I think he he gets one of the one of the worst this week for not being a bitch. Well, I would say for being a gentleman. Okay, I guess that's a better way to say it. <laughs> the gentleman's I mean, a war because there's there's a long. There's a long way between just not being a little bitch and being a gentleman. <laughs> There's a lot of gray in between those two. Uh. Oh. oh, now, I don't know if you heard this. <laughs> they were interviewing, or, well, it was, it was, it's hearsay because they were telling us a story that, about a conversation they had had with Wiccans, but <laughs> apparently they mentioned something about a lotion, and Wiccans yes. used to drive with him. Yeah, I yeah. heard that. And, and they asked Wiccans what he thought and all, you know, and with, you know, all the crashes he had this year and all that, and Wiccans, having, having driven with him in the past, all he said was, he's crazy. He's crazy. Like, okay, well, yeah. I mean, that's why we called him the Mad Russian. Yeah, makes sense to me. Oh, all right, round two, RHR off-roaded it a little bit. Got a little, well, you know, he just wanted to see what it's like. Right, turn five, he had to get, you know, turn turn five was going to snatch somebody. He was going to he was gonna play a little fast and loose, so it tried to get RHR, and he was like, not today. Not today, Satan, not, not today. today. And he off-roaded it and popped right back on, which, awesome. Yeah, especially in those cars, amazing. Seriously. Yeah. Yeah, it was a good, it, he had a, he, I mean, he had a good weekend. He really did. Yeah. So good for good for him. Yeah, he really did have a good weekend. Uh, so yeah, excellent, excellent for him. And he made it into the fast six. He did. Uh, Rossi did not. No. Uh, his whole qualifying fell apart because of his tires. He had it. He had a good run, and then Just some the other tires. guys went out and were doing better. And uh, the tires he was on, he tried to get an extra lap out of them, and really Just didn't work. couldn't pull it off with his equipment. Yeah. Nope. And yeah. I mean, and he pretty much said that he was like, well, we tried, but you know, took a gamble, tired. didn't work. Yep. Rolled the dice. Didn't work. Sometimes you hold them. Sometimes you fold them. Right. Uh. So yeah. So our poll winner was Joey new, Joey new and then power. So some of the, some of the Penske boys realized that the team meetings are getting a little uncomfortable. <laughs> yeah, uh, I think Roger Pinsky has probably enforced a corporal punishment rule at this point. Yeah, yeah. Because really, Pinsky has not had good luck this year. No, it's not been a great year. No, I mean, Newgarden has done well. Right. Uh, but, but Power has had a very disappointing season thus far. Yeah. And, yeah. and Pagano as well. Yeah, I mean, Power, going into this race, he was eighth. And then Pagano was 16th. Now, obviously, Simon had that whole issue at Long Beach. So, I mean, that's going to fuck you up. Absolutely. But still, yeah, not the great year that coming off of what happened last year. I mean, we're only four four races in? Four races in. Yeah. But still, kind of thought they'd be doing better. Yeah, I I did as well. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. But the top two in the Fast Six were Chevys. The the back four were all Hondas. Seabass, RHR, Hinch, and Dixie. Yeah. I mean, it was quite quite the mix of teams. Um, it was. This whole race, it honestly. really was. And, uh, well, and this was the first repeat team and driver win of the season. Yes. Yeah. Which, yeah, I, which I love. That's one of the things. I just love the variety in IndyCar. I do, too. Oh, I do too. I, I love it. I was surprised that Dixon uh, did not start better than sixth. He just, uh, I mean, I don't know. Some, there was something yeah. going on. I don't, I mean, well, I don't know he, what, but. Right. And well, and he almost got bumped out of the fast six. Yeah. Uh, so so was yeah, moment. I was, I was surprised at that, but you know, it is what it is. It is what it is. Yeah. So, well, so yeah. So the race itself. I don't even know where to begin with this race. I go. I guess we should start at the beginning where they had to move the race time because of of rain. Because of rain, so yeah. uh, so needles went off, and I did not. I only saw that race brief or that uh, incident briefly. See, I yeah, and I've only seen it from one angle. He said Jones hit him. Jones said he didn't. I just couldn't tell because of the angles and the on the rain on the camera. I don't know. Well, and yeah, those cars produce so much spray. Yeah, I'll tell you this. No, we couldn't see for sure, but. I don't know that Ed Jones would have known whether or not he was touching Kimball. 
Well, and I that's how, there, that's how close they were. There was no way he could have seen it. I think honestly that he was too close for safety. I don't. There's not a rule about that. Uh, but if we See, were in race control, we'd have one. I just don't know because I couldn't tell how close they are because of the camera angle. That's the other thing. Yeah, the camera angle is not great for that yeah, that particular spot. So and it was coming yeah, out I, of five up up six. So it could have just been that Charlie. I just don't know. But yeah, Charlie got on TV afterwards and decided to be. Mr. Cranky Pants about everything. He was Mr. Cranky Pants, which made me laugh because he Does has hit so everybody. many other drivers. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but I will say, you know, those cars, it's not necessarily, it's not a smooth ride. No. Like that's not, race cars are, are a rough ride. Sure. And so with that track, with the rain and all that, I think that it's totally possible that with the normal vibrations and sensations that you have just from, you know, that rougher ride, I think it's 100% possible that Ed Jones could have bumped him and not realized it. Oh, yeah, but it also could be that he didn't. And he also could have not done yeah, it. Yeah, I just don't uh, know. I can't I don't see know. Yeah. I kind of... I kind of err on the side of Charlie Kemble on this one, though. Really? Just with as close. Yeah, I really, I think, I think it's more likely that he did hit him than it than that he didn't. I and I will say opposite. that because Monday when they ran the race uh, with like ten minutes left or something, Chip Ganassi came over and was you know telling something to Ed Jones and you know telling him something, and they basically said, "Let's see, oh, where's my." They told him not um, to cause a yellow yeah, because oh, yeah. Dixon didn't they, want they a yellow. They were like, keep going, but don't cause a yellow. Well, that's because and Dixon so, didn't want a yellow. Well, I knew that Dick, I know Dixon didn't want a yellow because he was on a fuel strategy. See, and that's but, why I think they said that. I don't think they said it because he hit Charlie. I think it was, if if a yellow happens, don't be the one to cause it. Your teammate doesn't want a yellow. I mean, I think that that goes without saying, though. I don't think that you tell mm-hmm. that to a driver that doesn't hit other drivers. I don't. I, I wouldn't put a lot of stock in that because Dixon was trying to catch everybody on a fuel strategy. And so you want everybody on board with that. I'm not giving I that mean, a lot of credit. I mean, I I hear you. I just, you know, nobody's going to tell Rossi not to cause a yellow. Well, yeah, but you have to remember that it is only Ed's second year. So that well, might be something you want to tell a second year, like, look, hey, well, remember. Well, nobody was telling Rossi that last year. It was, it was only his second year last year. I don't think any of the other Andretti were in that position that Dixon were in last year. <laughs> Except Rossi. Yeah. So. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. So, yeah. So. Anyway. Maybe they got hit. Maybe they didn't. But there was no. Nothing. Race Control did not do anything about that. Because that was... they can neither confirm or deny that there was a hit. So that caused the first the first of many pauses in the race uh the second one after they went back to green immediately after green oh my gosh joey knew i mean wiggled hard had a hard hydroplane in the main straightaway and then the willpower spin out yeah he obviously he must have hit the exact same spot yeah it looked uh, like it yeah newgarden did because they were you know they were on the same line and he just lost it uh he was trying to go full throttle. I mean, because he said, you know, it, it doesn't, you know, if you'd rather be full, you know, be have full throttle so that you actually have better grip and control. Yeah. Uh, and his spin out, like, how in the actual fuck did he not hit RHR? I thought that he was about to. I was out of my seat screaming because I thought this is like, I don't know what's about to happen, but one hit in that rain and it was just going to be all over. And it was just, I mean, it was so fucking close oh and God. with them not being able to see when they showed you know will's car camera view and you see how close Oops. i mean mm-hmm. rhr's car by the time you see it is almost com- it's done there. passing yeah. him yeah you know rhr probably saw just a, a blip of silver and probably shit his pants because <laughs> there's no way that he saw him spinning until no, he I crossed don't. right in front of his nose and i think rhr it, even said that he's like i didn't even see it happen until it was already there yeah i mean that was I'm surprised they waited that long to call a red because those are definitely not safe racing conditions. Well, I know at I one point we all want to run the yeah. race on the day it's supposed to be run on, but at some point, like there's a line. Well, and I think uh, Veach at one point they came over his radio and they're like, you know, Dixon's behind you, and they're like, okay, Dixon's in front of you, and Zach was like, I I didn't see Dixon pass me, and it wasn't a like it wasn't a far pass, like it was right there, and mm-hmm. he just said, I didn't even see Dixon pass me because of the visibility issues. I mean, Newgarden was in front, and he said that he couldn't see shit. Yeah, and that's uh, the front. And, yeah, and he's in the front. He doesn't have any cars spraying things into his face. <sighs> Everybody on the field said they couldn't see anything. I know there were 
IMs and messages to race control yes. from every team. I think at one uh, point race control's system just like broke down because all it would say was, we know there's a situation, we'll get back to you. Like it was like a, an, a, an instant message away. Automated reply. Well, it made me laugh because you remember that the rule about how you are not allowed to, all the things that you're not allowed to send to race control. <laughs> and, I'm sure that know, was broke insulting etc but one of them is repetitive messages and i thought i wonder if anybody like obviously they did not enforce that because i'm sure there were multiple people who sent multiple messages about like hey guys what about this fucking rain yeah like are we going to do something or not yeah are we going to continue to put our driver's lives in danger for the sake of competition like what are we, the Roman Empire? Like, let's stop this. Let's stop this. And they, I mean, they did, like, I mean, they called it only after 23 laps, but they could have called it earlier. They definitely could have. Uh, I don't so, know. So, yes. So, that's pretty wild. Pretty so, close. the cars were, so they red flagged it. Yeah. And so, the huge issue, and this was the only legitimate thing that Marco had to bitch about, is that they did allow the cars to refuel and, uh, and to uh, change tires before yeah. the start of the race on Monday. And they also had the push to pass reset. They did. They did mm -hmm. have the push to pass reset, which I think that's fine. Mm -hmm. um, the push to pass reset, I think, is fine because you know it was a completely different race on Monday. Now the refueling. See, but here's the problem: you can't. And I I understand everybody's side, but you can't be you can't be okay with one and not the other. Like it's if we're continuing the race, then we should start at the very same spot that we ended it, well, or or start everything new. You know. Because that's that's fair. You know? um, I yeah, I would say, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, with only twenty three laps, I don't see but I don't push think... to pass as being as there having been that much disparity between the drivers on what they had left. I don't think anybody uh, even used push and, to and pass. So, <laughs> yeah, and so that's that's where to me the push to pass is kind of a moot point because I feel well, like what if it's somebody had though? Like what if well, there was a dig a disparity? I mean, I just don't feel like there was that much of a disparity for it. I, I feel like it was a moot point. So I guess that's where I'm okay with that because I don't think that it really was going to make any fucking difference, mm -hmm. uh, whether they allowed it or didn't allow it. I understand your, like, you know, straight ticket vote here, uh, but I do disagree with the refueling. Um, and it's an interesting quandary because I, I understand, I understand where they came from. I will say I understand now. I'm so I glad I'm not. It. In, I'm not in that position. That is the most unenviable position ever because. Oh God, yeah. Because they couldn't lock the cars up like Texas and and, and Jim Alo and we retweeted the article because he laid it out perfectly. But you mm -hmm. you couldn't lock up the cars. The cars were unsecured, and so they were like, "Screw it, we're gonna let you guys refuel and change tires." Now, what they didn't do was like Will's car. They stopped maintenance on it so they couldn't try and fix it anymore that is true because there is a hard and fast maintenance rule yeah however there is not a specific rule about refueling uh i mean there's technically that whole... the cars are supposed to be park firma yeah and there's and, not one and so the fact that there's not a place to do that at barber um uh, i think and there were a lot of people that said you know why why are we making an issue out of this now why was there not already a contingency plan and I agree with that. You and I are both planners. Yeah. And so, again, someday maybe we'll take over race control and there will be a new sheriff in town. Well, here's what here's the easy fix. Lock up the refueling equipment. Exactly. I mean. Exactly. You don't, have a, you don't have to have a place for all the cars. Yeah. Lock, lock up, up the, the refueling. Fuel. I'm sure they could all fit somewhere and lock it down. Yeah. There's a storage locker somewhere. <laughs> okay. I'll put it in a temporary office and throw a padlock on it. Put a guard done. in front of it. Like done, done. But I mean, I, yeah, there's a lot of bitching, and I guess I, I think I come down on the line of don't refuel. But you know what? I was not standing in race control shoes at that moment. Well, and I think that you know part of their decision was that they wanted since. Since it was a disappointment to run the race on a Monday, yeah. obviously it's a work day. We luck out with the Indy 500 that if it has to be run on a Monday, it's still a holiday. Surprise! And so most people are not at work. Yeah. And a lot of, you know, everybody local and some out-of-town people can still stay because it's a holiday weekend. Yeah. Um, 
obviously you have flights and things you can't but so we we're lucky with that on the 8500 but with barber i think that since it was a disappointing race mm-hmm. you know it was disappointing well it wasn't a disappointing race it was disappointing to have to race it on monday right. and because they knew that you know that there were going to be a lot of fans who had to leave and all that they were trying to make it as competitive and as entertaining as possible i think that definitely plays into that uh, position good lord that decision 100 percent. yeah yeah so Again, but yeah, we definitely see... would not have wanted to be in their shoes. No, 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 and hell no. You know what? That's a damned if you do, damned. I mean, if he would have made the other, if he would have decided the other way, as many people would have been upset. I, I would imagine. Oh, absolutely, so. absolutely. Well, and I don't know what it is, um, but the deeper we go into the IndyCar rabbit hole. It, the, there are so many people that just like to bitch about everything. Right. You know what? Can I just take a moment and, you know, enjoy the racing that you get to see because it is great racing. We have a great year. Great. Uh, fantastic. You can root for, you, you can root for anybody. Obviously, we have our favorites, but there's not, it's just a good season. And why is, why do people got to complain about everything? Enjoy the race. Seriously. Enjoy the race. Yeah. But. But did you get to watch a race? Right. Okay. Then shut up. You can disagree about it. I We disagree about many things that happen during the race. But at the end of the day, I'm not coming home pissed. I'm excited I got to see a race. Exactly. I'm like, well, you know what? You not know what? A bad day at the racetrack is still better than a good day at work. Exactly. Okay? Exactly. So, and I also just want to give a shout out to myself. Uh, <laughs> so, we are members of many different open wheel racing groups on uh, on Facebook and other social media sites. And, of course, there was bitching in one of the open wheel groups this week about, I don't know, uh, secure, about how they wanted increased security oh, in the 500. Yeah. Which, first off, if you're somebody that's pushing for increased security in longer lines, like, get fucked. First of all, you weren't there uh, for the 100th race, the run- running, where people were missing shit. Yeah, because they didn't didn't get there early enough. So yeah. first off, the the IMS does an excellent job at security, 100%. and there is there's so much security that you're not aware of because there's undercover and plain clothes officers. So calm down. Yeah. But it was this whole comment thread, and <laughs> some guy and a, a guy commented that he didn't agree, and he said, made some joke about like. Um, PMS. He made the PMS. Yeah, PMS joke. about how like you know he'll have to get in touch with this PMS woman thing because he's you know he's like I have too much fun at the end of five hundred to find something to bitch about. He's like maybe I'll have to get in touch with my PMS woman thing, <laughs> you know, and complain. And and I, and I found that humorous. Don't get me wrong. I mean, a, a funny joke is a funny joke. Right. But, but I, I did comment back and I was like, I do just want to point out that not a single woman has complained. Yeah. All men complaining was, in this thread. I, I was like, I just want to point out, I was like, not a single woman has complained about anything, so maybe it's a man thing. Yeah, maybe. You ever think about that? Don't, yeah, this this whole PMS woman thing? Nope, it's, it's, it's not, that's that's not a thing. Nope. I think that you just, you just want to not accept that you like to bitch about things. Yeah. So, if you want to complain, that's fine. Like, accept it, own it. Yeah, I mean that's fine, but don't be like, nah, I should. I'm like a woman. Nope, nope, you're just cranky. Nope, nope, because the women we're we're not bitching. We're not. So anyway, anyways, Day so two. yeah, um, and then we got started yesterday, and that was good shit uh, until uh, the rain 20- came back. Well, so the rain came back. Well, but uh, so ZCD Zachary Clamon Demello and Spencer. Uh, drove like a bat out of hell oh my god it was fantastic driving it was fantastic driving um but he also he had contact with Piggott. that was an amazing contact they got tangled up slid at least two turns got untangled and they both continued the race damn right they did i mean kudos boys kudos yeah like well done yeah uh yeah they were like battling it out yeah and then and then they continued to to battle into the next turn, and yeah, it was it was wild. It was, it was I mean, cool. and I love that they both like hit, made contact, and then just kept on going. They're like, like, all right, well, let's keep doing. And then I do want to point out that I think one of the coolest things for the race was that after they threw the green or yellow flag, um, so they weren't allowed to work on Will's car at all 
and then once they threw the flag, you know, they got it going. And he was he was back on the racetrack within about 15 minutes. Yeah, they actually got that fixed a uh, lot quicker than they thought they were going to yeah. be able to. I mean, kudos to his team. Absolutely. Although he did not finish the race, what happened with that? I think they had another mechanical thing. I okay, couldn't quite I find that, that out. They, yeah, because I know that they were going out, you know, and uh, the announcers talked about, like, you know, what's the point if you're, you know, 20 laps down or whatever? And basically the resounding answer was knowledge uh yeah and, you know, and um based on the mileage of the engine somehow it would play out that they wouldn't get a new engine until halfway through may or bef- you know not when they wanted that new engine gotcha so that well, like, that makes sense too engine strategy came into play mm, i didn't even think about that yeah. but that makes sense yeah because they've got yeah max number of hours slash miles yeah i think it's like fifty thousand miles or twenty thousand miles maybe i'd have to look i don't know Rain came back. Rain came back, and the, uh, which screwed up Dixon's fuel game that we talked about. Because everybody mm-hmm. was, you know, this one stop versus two stops. Yeah. And so a lot of guys were trying to just do one stop and play that fuel game. And then uh, it got wiped out. And, and Rain bitch slapped that idea. Rain said, nope, we're playing by my rules. Yep. So the two-stop guys ended up having three stops. The one-stop guys ended up having, having at least two. Yeah. Uh, but then, had the rain not come, I bet Dixon would have podiumed again. I think so. I mean, had, I mean, let's talk about it. Had the rain, well, no, because Bourdais' tire strategy was intriguing to watch the whole race. Speaking of pit strategies, Dixon's pit speed limiter was broken. See, they said it was broken, and then they also said that he just doesn't have one on his car. Really? I don't, I think that everybody has one on their car. They talk because I know that they were giving him, um, cause they don't tip, yeah, because they don't typically have miles per hour on their car or kilometers per hour, um, because it, it doesn't matter. Right. Uh, like, you know, okay. we have it so that we know not to go over the speed limit, but like they're race car drivers. So, so but on know. their screen, they have a couple different views, a couple different mm-hmm. layouts they can choose from. So they discussed that, you know, the team was telling him to maybe toggle to a different screen so that he could see his miles per hour, um, which obviously Dixon likes the screen he has and was like, nope, nope. come up with a better solution. <laughs> not gonna and they were like, <laughs> and they were like, okay, keep it under 6,700 RPM. Yeah. Like they, all right. I heard that I heard them both say it was broken and or he didn't he just doesn't have one. So I don't know. I think maybe they were just referencing like that he doesn't have one for this maybe. race because Who I'm knows. pretty sure that's required on all the cars. I don't know. Paul Tracy said I, mean, I guess I guess maybe it's not required. Uh, but I don't know why you wouldn't want no, it because that would, it would be my thought. So many penalties. Yeah, like it's smart. Yeah, that's work smart, not hard. Yeah, like okay, put it on there. But anyway, yeah, that was interesting that he didn't have it. And that's why he got a pit speed last last race. Mm-hmm. So that was interesting. Um, Very interesting. Let's see. I think uh, the rain, Bourdais staying out on those slick tires. That oh was my gosh. kind of ballsy. Uh, super ballsy. He was out in the lead. He had like um, he had quite quite a stretch between him and and uh, the person running in P two. And there was like and. 10 laps to go. Yeah. 10 and, minutes to go, I guess, not laps, because it was a time race. Yeah, yes. Um, and Rossi was still on uh, on dry tires as well. And Bourdais, I mean, he was, he, he definitely slowed down with the rain. And yeah. his lead came to, like, 11 seconds. Like, it, it came down to only 11 seconds. And he came over the radio, and he was like, yeah, I'm, only one more time, and yeah. that's it. Like, he was like, I'm, I'm going to lose control of this car. And... But then the next time he came around, he obviously had changed his mind a little bit because he did another lap on drives. He was like, well, oh, maybe one more. But then he He's came like, over oh. and he was like, this is it. I was like, right. It, but but like, is it? Oh, on second thought, you know what? I'm, I'm going to do this. Maybe one more. Maybe. Right. So, I mean, again, Sebastian Bourdais being a complete badass, yeah. like just rolling with the punches and driving an extremely controlled, fast yeah. race in the, in rain, the rain on, on tires. Yeah. Not made for the race. Yeah. Oh, he was pulling the Teresa Hilliker strategy. He sure was. Oh, uh, yeah. Tell that about your mom yesterday. So, Sunday. Sunday, when I was I was over at their house going to watch the race with Dad, obviously, you know, we didn't we didn't watch a race. It was fine. But at one point, my mom was like, oh, it's raining. And I was like, yeah. And they're like, well, do they, what are they doing? I was like, oh, well, they have rain tires. She goes, 
well, do they have to put on the rain tires? <laughs> like, slightly judgmental. And I was like, I mean... Interesting strategy, Teresa. Okay, so deal coin. Uh, my mom is on board with Sebastian Bourdais' strategy. Yeah, she's like, I mean... If you need a team mom, Teresa is available. She'd be a great team mom. Oh, my God. Especially if she you... should do that in her retirement, like, be like a sorority mom. Uh, I, don't, I don't think the world is ready for that. Oh, I'll tell you what, though. It would produce some, some very, uh, it would produce some, some very productive members of society. That's true. That's true. The fear is real with that woman. I mean, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> that is. Uh, uh, so, so, yeah. Anyway. Uh, and then. So, Bordea de Pitt, and obviously that gave the lead back to New. It sure did. Uh, mm -hmm. And then Piggott, with about a little under six minutes left, his car stalls. Yeah. And so he flipped it into neutral, refired it, got it started again, and then just kept on going. I, you know what? Pick kind of drove a, a little badass this week. I was, I was pleased. I'll tell you what. I mean, he, he only finished 15th, and I think that that stall so late in the race is, yeah. is why, which is unfortunate. But, uh, but yeah, like, I mean, he drove like a beast with the contact early yeah. on. And then, I mean, refiring the car and getting it start again. And I also want to point out, the car was going uphill. Yes, in the rain. And so, in the rain. And anybody who has ever driven a manual oh, God, understands yeah, that... the struggle the hill. Of, of the hill. Yes. And everybody, their first time driving a manual, kills it. it going up a hill. Yep. And then you have to restart it on the hill and try to get out of first gear. Yep. And it is not easy. Um mm -hmm. uh, I mean, you know, I, I drive a stick all the time now, so, you know, it's definitely, you know, it's like second nature now, and obviously all these drivers do as well. But it is definitely more difficult than just doing a, a refire. Like hitting a button. Like you have to do a whole situation. It's a whole thing. And yeah. flipping in a neutral, I mean, and that's also, I mean, he knew he was going to be losing exponential speed because he was, he had no power and yeah. he was going up a hill. But, yeah, managed to refire that car and get right back on. That was amazing. I, I mean, Somebody needs to. I hope that boy got a, a huge high five. Like that, that <laughs> might be my favorite move of this race. He got the Ed Carpenter bro head nod, probably, which is a you lot I, coming I, from I, Ed. I think he got the like, the like handshake, pull it in for a hug. Oh my, that's saying a lot from Ed. <laughs> I, well, I, well, I think also because you know when he did have contact, he didn't ruin the car. Yeah, so he did not he, ruin the car. Yeah, so he got he got a he got a, a bro hug. For he sure. did. Yeah, that's true. With the contact, he got the bro hug. He definitely did. Oh. So, yeah, I think that to me, that was very impressive. That so, was, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm excited to, it, I mean, I've not been super excited about Spencer Piggott. Yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't dislike the kid. He's just, uh, I just, he's there. He's just there, yeah. Uh, but that to me, I was like, okay, I'm going to have to keep my eye on him. Cause yeah, okay. That okay. was, I mean, that, that, that takes some skill and it confidence. Does. It does. Only his, really his second year in. Yeah, so, so there you go. Very impressive. Very impressive. Um, so Joey knew one. He sure did. Uh, the commenter, the announcers commented at one point. You know, oh, he's got fast hands. And, <laughs> and, and, and watching the race by myself, I was like, yeah, he does. Because <laughs> I never pass up good innuendo. Oh yeah. Uh, even never. by ourselves. Even by ourselves. Yeah, and then I just laughed at myself. Uh, but yeah, so it was funny the last, uh, last couple laps of that race, he kind of had to reel in the speed. Uh, they were like, maybe. I mean, he had a hell of a lead, but he just is always trying to do better. Yeah. And I think that's a testament to him as a driver and why he has done so well, why he did so well last year, why he continues to do so well this year yeah. is that he is just trying his hardest always. And, you know, his strategist had to come over and be like, listen. You know, there's Tim. only a couple laps left. Like, you're, you're just racing against yourself right now. Yeah. Tim Centric said, like, whoa, 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 calm down, buddy. Let's not like, let's, ruin it. Let's not stick it into the wall right. uh, with three laps to go. Nobody wants that. Nobody, Nobody wants that. Uh, Wickens had a solid race as well. Yeah, he came for, in fourth, so that's not bad. For, yeah, per use. That's, per that's use. become his norm. Yeah, poor guy. Uh, yeah, and then at the very end, uh, Dixon and Bourget really was a battling it out for, yes. for fifth. Yeah, I mean, 
mean, Dixon kept trying to pass him on corners, just couldn't quite get there, couldn't pull it off. And then, yeah, it was basically like a, a drag right. race down that last straightaway. In the rain, and I was like, oh, oh, guys. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> I was literally, like, on my feet yelling. Yeah, yeah, it was one of those moments. Oh, yeah, that was wild, which, of course... Uh, Bourdais got in fifth, Dixon came in sixth, which yeah. screwed me out of points because I picked Dixon for the top five. You did. I sure did. Got screwed on that. But, but yeah, that was pretty awesome. And I'll tell you, so they talked a lot about Zachary Clement and Mello, uh, Sunday, uh, well, yeah, Sunday a little bit and then Monday. Yeah. Uh, but I'll tell you, another rookie that they did not talk about that I think ran a solid race and actually finished better than CCD is Renee Bender. Yeah, he did a good, actually, all of the, all of the rookies... Nope. Uh, they did fine. Yeah. Sorry. They I really to, did, yeah. Bender came listened. in 16th. Uh, Clement Amello was 19th. Yeah. Um, which is funny because that's also his car number. I know. It's uh, kind of nice for me to write stuff like that because it makes me feel better about myself. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Right. Jordan King was 14th. Gabby was 17th. Mateus was 12th. So. Yeah. Well, Gabby's not necessarily a rookie, but he's also not I know. a season. It's so weird. They call him a rookie, but I'm like, is he really? Well, it's, he's it's a weird for a full-time season. Yeah. But at the same time, so, you're like, uh. I mean, like, yes and no. Which, so I think that about sums up the race. So let's, speaking of Gabby Chavez. Oh, my goodness. Talk about, oh, uh, Simon Pagano was mad like, displeased. Yes. Um, and went over to give Gabby the business because he was convinced that Gabby was blocking and not allowing him to pass, even though Gabby was, you know, a couple laps down. And Pagano finished ninth, which is definitely not as high as he wanted to finish. Right. And it's just, you know, he's been, he didn't get to race, you know, other, he, he only got to race into turn one last week. Yeah. Uh, hashtag thanks, Ray Hall. And so, yeah, so he went to Chavez to give him the business and tell him, you know, like, fuck you for not letting me around you. And Chavez was like, Go fuck yourself. Yeah, get the, uh, get he, the fuck he out actually, of here. Uh, yeah, he, like, let him talk for a minute. And he was like, what are you talking about? He's like, I, I let plenty of people around me. You weren't close enough to pass that it had you been. I would have let you around me. Mm-hmm. And Pagano gave him some more lip. And he was like, get the fuck out of here, man. Like, he's, he's sitting on his pit box. And Simon just walks up. And Simon says a few more things. And Gabby had a slew of, I don't know, maybe 30 F words, which yeah. really endeared him to me. <laughs> uh. I was like, mm, he's moved up on. On, on drivers that I would want to hang out with. On the driver list. <laughs> yeah. Although nobody really noticed, and at the very end of the video, Pagano quietly under his breath says, fuck you. <laughs> if you go back and watch it at the very end, and he does not turn so that you can read his lips, but, but uh, uh, yeah, but he, at the very end, he's like, fuck you. Yep. And then walks away. Uh... <laughs> so... But also, kudos to Gabby, because Pagano, I mean, is a seasoned driver, and I'm sure can be extremely intimidating. Yeah. And so Gabby, being a rookie for a full-time season, uh, not necessarily a, a rookie in an yeah. car ever, but, you know, not not a seasoned driver. He's one of the newer guys in the group. And typically, you would think that, you know, low man on the totem pole would kind of back down and, and heed whatever somebody else is saying. But he was like, he no, you're, you're, you're wrong. Get yeah. fucked. Yeah. So. And I love that. Standing his ground. Nice. Good on him. So. Oh. Well, we didn't do too well this week either with our personal picks. No, I picked New Garden for top 10. I should have picked him to win. So I got a point for that. You got uh, a point. That was it. Was that it? That I was it. Had... Had you know you had for first, Dixon for uh, fifth. Yes. Yep. 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 You had King for first out. Didn't happen. That's all right. I got zero points, so it's almost like last week where I got one point and you got zero points. Yeah, no, it was a bad week for you, that's for sure. Yeah. I'll but, tell you what, though. My, my fantasy indie card did fantastic, yeah, though. Yeah, I did fine in everything else, but not in ours, so. Yeah, I had New Garden, Hinch, Dixon, and Bender. And so I had one, three, and six, and then uh, 16. So, so, yeah, that one, three, and six on New Garden, Hinch, and, and Dixon – did very well for me. Yeah. So, yeah. I, I mean, and, and your fantasy team did well. This did very well this week too. Yeah, I'm second in the overall standings on the one I'm on. So, but no. not in our personal one right here on this podcast. No, no, we are not doing well on our personal one. But you know what? Oh. We're going into Indy, so it's fine. 
that hometown it's advantage fun. kicks in. We'll get on the roll. I'm done. Like, we'll be fine. Hell yeah. I'm trying to win the, the family bet two years in a row. I'm trying to go back to back. That's that's impressive. I'm going to try and pull an alio. There you go. <laughs> well, white flag. And what, what, what you got for white flag? Yeah, I think we said white flag. Uh, again, I just want to say check out uh, the Mutt Strut if you have a dog. Yep. Do it. Fun. Do it this Saturday. It's fun. It's fun times. Uh, and if you don't have a dog, or if you have a dog and you just don't want to do it, check out our video because it's fantastic. <laughs> uh, check out our hype video. For I was it. concerned where you were going with that. <laughs> yep. Nope. Check out our hype video. Uh, it's good times. It is fun. Um, yeah, I'm. I'm just excited. We got two weeks to the to the IndyCar Grand Prix. Yep. And then we've got the Indy 500, so it's about to be a real busy month for us, but it's my favorite time of year, and I just, I mean, the closer we get to May, the bigger the shitty grin gets on my face, so. Yep, yep. So, yeah, I'm pumped. Oh, I'm yeah. just pumped. Oh, yeah. Wait, what about you? Yeah, I mean, basically the same vein. Starting, actually starting Thursday, um, I think it just kicks off for us. We got Thursday, we got Saturday, Monday, Tuesday, like, let's go. Absolutely. And this Thursday is Behind the Wheel, yeah. which we've been promoting on our Twitter. Uh, and I think you put some stuff up on the Insta as well. Yeah, I tried to hit it and on everything. So, yeah, so if you're local, if you're around town, come come to Behind the Wheel. It's it's this Thursday, uh, April 26th. We're going to go. There's a stop. It starts at the Lara Car yeah. Factory. You can learn more about IndyCar. You can network. So bring your business cards. Um, it's about 30 or 33 bucks, somewhere in there. Yeah. But well worth it. Definitely. Well well worth it yeah um and we're gonna go to 1911 grill so and i believe foyt winery is a stop as well so yes. it's yeah it's gonna be a good time 21 and over only um so which means so it's gonna be 21 time. we'll see you next year <laughs> but yes that means there will be alcohol so there you go race cars networking and alcohol Ta-da. yeah trifecta of winning yep all righty so so, yeah. All right. Well, let's wave that checkered flag. Thanks uh -huh. for listening. See you guys.